My name is Lona Waheto and Vitiligo is beautiful. Wango Inje and Julie Nasuju might have been raised worlds apart, but they have something that bonds them together. They both suffer from vitiligo. To the naked eye, their stories might appear similar, but it is so different in every aspect. You see here, it was dotted on my face, so people would really stare and say mean things, hyena, cow, you know. So there's a day I went to Hilton Arcade, there's a, there's a makeup shop there. I tried, I tried, the lady was like, my friend, you can't even conceal this, so just forget about it. I was being beaten up, I was being um, abused psychologically, because he used to tell me I can never be somebody. I'm a mother of three kids who can accept you the way you are, look at your skin condition. But what is vitiligo? Vitiligo is an autoimmune condition where your own immune cells affect cells called melanocytes, which are cells that contain melanin. Now, because of the destruction of these cells, you end up getting areas or patches of the skin which do not have color. Lona Waihito was born and brought up in Dandora. At the age of four, her mother noticed an unusual birthmark on her bubbly daughter. Her mother would seek the counsel of Lona's grandmother. Unfortunately, she was as clueless as her daughter. There is a specific medicine, a watery medicine. You apply, then you go to the sun. Gosh. Hey, Linfanya Madara. I woke up one morning and it was white all over my hands, my legs, my thighs. Such incidents for young Lona would lead the now mother of one into depression. I cried. I told my mom this is not normal. I don't want to leave. I want to die. Even though she had a supportive family back at home, life in high school proved to be anything but what she might have expected bullying from mischievous teenagers. Lona faced towns from unexpected quarters. Kuna walimu tu, kuna walimu, a physics teacher, though I was not doing physics, he used to call me mzungu, we mzungu, kuja apa mzungu, and one day I was like, we mwalimu, misi mzungu. To make the situation worse, her paternal grandmother labeled her Mzungu. The neighbors. There was a neighbor called Mama Kamau. Alikuwa na chotelea maji kwa sink. Nikaenda nikapata imeja, nikafunga, nikasongia shando, nichote yangu. She came, she poured the water down, she washed the door with soap and jig. And I was like, seriously, unadu? I've lived like that, but I told them they're never going to bring me down. This is not inability. It's not a disability. I can do anything that you can. We are just the same. And I am unique. You have the one color. I have the two colors. Lona is not the only one who has faced such challenges. 30-year-old Julie Nasuju was rejected by her own biological father. Later in her adult life, she was spurned by men she sought solace with. I felt like I want to commit suicide. Yeah. Actually, mm, swallowed uh, like 300 paracetamols. And I only slept. And the next day I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm talking up, the only thing I did was just puke in the morning. I just puked. And I continued and I was like, no, I see these things, they work. <laughs> How comes I'm not going? So I had struggled to end my life and it wasn't the first time I tried to kill myself, by the way. I decided to go back home to my mom. So I just packed my things, everything, my kids, and I went back to my mom's. Julie currently has four children. She's a perfect example of making lemonade from lemons that life has offered her. On most evenings, you'll hear her voice on Need Radio, an online radio station. When she's not in studio, she struts the catwalk as a part-time model. After that, uh, after a week is when I met with um, Big, I don't know if you know Big Ideas Entertainment. So when I met up with one of them and took a photo of me. After taking a photo and then they, they come and, and they came and told me that you do your photogenic. I was like, what do you mean by photogenic? See, everybody takes a photo. No, you look very good on camera. You should just think about yourself as, as a model or something. Julie recalls the days when she was in primary school and was bullied enough times. That's until one day. She would just make fun of me daily, daily, daily. And so I decided to close the day with her. This is 
closing day nafunga na wewe so i decided to close with her <laughs> i fought with her and i i won after i won though to lipata punishment and all that but something changed in me I felt I could defend myself now. Even though she regrets that fight, she realizes that it was a battle that needed to be fought and won. This would serve her well as she proceeded to high school, where she learned how to defend herself. She told them that the condition was contagious. Unfortunately, this line could not be used in the real world that understand very little about vitiligo. If, for example, like we took just a walk with you, just outside, just outside there, just like a walk, you just see how people stare. And it's just during the day, everybody's working, but they'll stop working and look at you. They'll look at me because of the way I look. So imagine going through that every day. It is the same script but different casts for the people living with the condition in the country. Wangoin J is a former nominated member of the Nyeri County Assembly, a master's degree holder, and says getting a job has been an uphill task. You'd go and get jobs, but like I had gotten a job at a bank, but people will not come to my teller. So I'd stay there the whole day. People would come to, they'd come to your teller, go to someone else's teller, but not come to my teller. She'll seek comfort in tattoos that proved to be a distraction for many people. She currently has 20 of them. It has worked till today. People actually notice the tattoos, not the vitiligo first. Just like Julie, Rosa Koth has been facing the same problem, rejection from the man she loves. So much that her husband is now seeking another wife. She believes it's due to her skin condition. Naona tu kama sasa naona kama mimi mwili imegeuka, niko na ugonjwa wengine mbaya. Sasa ataki ro yake anataka kwena mwenye sasa ko na vitu yani ya mwili poa. For years, Rose has been living in isolation. Her extended family has not come to terms with her condition. Initially, her husband provided the much-needed support and comfort. Now, only her children are providing encouragement. But what hurts her most is the fact that her last-born daughter has the same condition that has been her source of pain. <laughs> juu kupata watu wenye wanachukua kama hata bwana yenye anaweza chukua mtu mwenye yako na hizi nilikuwa naona ni ngumu kupata for persons living with this condition the part of the skin that turns pale is vulnerable to the sun thus the need for the affected person to use sunscreen interesting to note though is that kenyans living with vitiligo have had to bear the pain of the bans brought about by the sun as they cannot access sunscreen and this is why. And we pray that um, the government would actually recognize us, not because we want to be put in the place of disabilities, but we want to get amenities that will help us not get skin cancer. And um, all we're asking the government is that we'll be able to get free sunscreen, just like people living with organism get. But uh, the SAT is yet, yet to be fully aware of the same and we need to work together to ensure that then even as we differentiate between urbanism and vitiligo, that actually uh, and truly so that we have to advance the agenda you know, of persons who have vitiligo. Isaac Mora is a nominated senator. He says that people living with vitiligo in Kenya might be more. Yes, Official statistics given by the World yes, Health Organization estimate that at least 2% of the world population are people living with a skin condition. So it would be important to have a headcount for persons who have it illegal in the country. And because this is not a, a, a genetic condition that then would occur sometimes at birth, sometimes it occurs way late into your, your adulthood, uh, maybe it would be better to work with the already existing uh, health facilities as to occasion the, you know, the frequency of the occurrence. But even as the few people living with vitiligo continue to suffer without government's intervention, advocates such as Wango Inje have devised new ways of helping people like herself by partnering with companies such as Navier and the Albinism Society of Kenya so as to help salvage the situation by providing sunscreen to the most vulnerable people affected by the condition. Uh, my car almost got burnt as I was coming to distribute sunscreen in Dandora 
People thought that I was coming to sell sunscreen and yet I was coming to give persons living with Vitiligo sunscreen. So I'm fully aware because of cash flow issues within government, mm -hmm. that's why I'm, I've taken it up, uh, you know, in terms, in, terms of, in terms of how they're supposed to be treated. According to the NHS website, there's currently neither a cure for vitiligo nor a universal accepted method for limiting the spread of the disease. We have a facility in Kenyatta, um, it's for phototherapy. I did it when I was seven, 18 years old. Um, we pay 300 per session and you see it depends actually the intensity of your body. You pay the 300 but you'll find uh, if you fully, your body has full vitiligo, you'll go for a session of 30 minutes for the 300. There are two types of vitiligo, segmental vitiligo and non-segmental. In some cases, the condition is also hereditary. My third bone actually has spots, which I started, I noticed them, which doesn't scare me actually. And the funny thing is that she... Even with all these challenges, all they want is to belong, to belong in a society that will look at them as normal persons. You see, them hating on them has created a lot of depression in persons living with vitiligo, which is not really right. It changes. There are times I see it's coming back, it's coming back, I'm like, yeah, it's coming back, and then all of a sudden I'm turning white, I'm turning white, I'm like, yeah, I'm becoming white again. For me, I enjoy my vitiligo. I don't know about anyone else, but for me, the patterns, I check my patterns every time. There are times it will form the map of Africa, there's a time it will form a love heart somewhere, there's a time it will just maps, anything, it just draws its own pattern. And for me, I take it like God just decided to draw me <laughs> anytime.